Rotating swings, or chair swing rides, are found in many amusement parks. They involve beautiful physics that often goes unnoticed. As the ride rotates, the swings hang out and move in circles with larger diameters, and the diameter is independent of the mass of the swing. This is a consequence of the principle of equivalence between the gravitational mass, as in mg, and the inertial mass, in MA. Rotating swings come in many thematizations, sizes and designs. The Starflyer rides lift the rotating seats high into the air for views and scare. The Wave Swinger or Chain Flyer rides remain closer to the ground but instead introduce additional excitement through a tilting of the roof which makes the swings move up and down in a wave motion. What assignments related to these rides would you give students in connection with an amusement park visit? The chains hang at an angle to the vertical and exert a force on the swings towards the center. A photo can be used to estimate the diameter of the circular motion using the diameter at rest. Depending on the camera position, it may also be possible to use the photo to measure the angle of the chain to the vertical. This angle gives a measure of the acceleration in horizontal motion. An example of such a measurement is to use a keyring or other object suspended from a string as an airplane gets ready for takeoff. The string must provide the force required for acceleration, but also compensate for gravity, as in the free body diagram for a body accelerating to the right. At the end of the flight, the plane has to slow down. During the braking after touchdown, the keyring moves forward relative to the plane. This indicates an acceleration backwards to the left in the movie. The angles of the chains in the star flyer or wave swinger rides are larger, but without a change of speed. During circular motion, the acceleration is orthogonal to the direction of motion. This means that the change of velocity only involves change of direction not a change of speed. The force situation becomes a bit more complex when the tilting roof is taken into account. As the swings move up and down, there is also an associated vertical acceleration. During the lower parts of the motion, this acceleration is directed upwards and leads to a reduction of the angle, but an increased force on the rider. During the higher parts of the motion, the vertical acceleration is directed downwards leading to a larger angle, but a smaller force. The accelerometer data show that the g-factor varies between 1 and 2. This means that the experience of your body varies as you ride between feeling your normal weight and feeling twice as heavy. During a physics day in the park, it may be possible to bring a soft glass of water along on a ride. What will happen to the water as the carousel moves? Will it spill out? Will it remain parallel to the ground? Will it remain parallel to the bottom of the glass? Or will it behave in some other way? Don't just look at the glass in the recording, but also at the surroundings. Do you see the vertical towers and the roller coasters coming past? Did the water behave as you expected? Chain swing rides offer a wide variety of possible investigations from simple measurements and geometrical considerations to surprising observations, modeling data collection and analysis. So, what assignments would you choose for your students?